All right, I'm really not too sure how the sound is going out. I've got the music turned way down. This music's from a podcast I've been listening to for some time. Mixotic, episode number 235. I put together these nearly two-hour grooves, just uh, trance type music, I suppose. DJ music. Don't know exactly what it's called. Anyhow, the different video sources you're seeing, one is yours truly up in the top right-hand corner. Still wearing my monkey suit. On the left is a series of Creative Commons photos through the Flickr with the tag Japan. Or maybe these aren't Creative Commons. I don't know if I got the tag right. And the video, Tokyo Station, this morning. A little bit after 7 o'clock. Yeah, that's right, headed back to work. Those of you who were here for the video yesterday realized, might have realized that I was busy procrastinating and avoiding the work that I needed to do. Namely, writing up a syllabi for four new classes. I was able to get that done early in the morning. I woke up about 3.30 and just was able to make it out for the 7 o'clock bus. Getting me onto a subway, which we just saw departing at the beginning after I arrived at Tokyo Station. And here I am about to descend a long way down. This place is crowded, so crowded in the morning. Let's take a look at all the people. And frankly, it's really not that busy right now. There are other times where it's just wall to wall. Just checking out the train I needed to take. I was looking for the 724. Had about two minutes to get down this long escalator. Down we go, down we go. For the last few years, all of my teaching has been within central Tokyo, so I've not needed to uh, spend much time at this big station. Subway gets me most of the places I need to go. But I picked up a new job last uh, September where I have to go out to Chiba. It's about a 15 minute ride. So here's the platform, we'll just take a little, little look around on the platform, and then I... Well, it's not the platform yet, is it? There's still one more escalator. And then I put the camera away for a second until we got out from underground. So you get to see the ride into Chiba and the outskirts of Tokyo. I think I can figure out why so few people have made their way over to the TV. Dr. Garcia doing story time on the DS-106 radio. No worries, this is just a practice run. To the one person out there, if you wish to Skype in, that would be cool. I need to check out the Skype functionality. I've not yet been able to uh, put the video on. So I'd like to see if I can do that. Skype video. comes the train. This one's moderately crowded. 
but it is inbound from Chiba. Well, I guess that would be the problem. Still. Now here's the ride out. This is the uh, eastern part of Tokyo. Approaching Chiba. The next two stops are still in Tokyo. Then after Shinkoiwa, we cross over into Chiba. If you're looking at the video right now, you should be able to see the sky tree. That's what that's called. It's a huge tower that's being constructed. It's going to be over 600 meters tall when it's finished. And yeah, just a, just a boring old train ride. Boring old train ride. You just get a sense from the... Uh, railway lines through the city, just how uh, densely populated this space is. And mind you, we're kind of on the outskirts, so it's less so than the inner circle of Tokyo, which I'll get some video of in the future. I'm finding I kind of like this technique, although well, I don't know how interesting the, the storytelling is going along. Hey, there's the sky tree. Look at that sucker. So that lower area there, that is at about the 350 meter mark, which is as high as the Tokyo Tower. And then they've decided to make this thing for the 21st century. I wondered how uh, the workers felt when that big earthquake hit last month. I didn't hear any reports of anything. Last night, uh, it was weird. I, like I said, I, I frittered away the day. Just I did about four hours on this TV thing, and it was uh, very energizing because a lot of people tuned in, and I was able to do a couple of Skype calls with Jim Groom and with uh, Dr. Garcia and Michael Smith. And then uh, when afternoon rolled around, it was time for me to go pick up my youngest daughter from her after-school activity. And it had really started to rain. It was pouring rain, and she didn't have an umbrella. So I packed up her umbrella and her rain suit. I put on my rain clothes and then took a huge garbage bag to put her backpack and stuff in. And I got there, and as I was standing outside of the building, I felt this little weird sensation under my feet. I almost stumbled, and I just thought that it was me. And uh, as we were walking home, we... Uh, walked for about four minutes and there's this one little jewelry shop where uh, it's run by a guy in his late 40s probably he's in his uh his workspace is right on the window area looking out on the sidewalk uh, looks like he's got a pretty nice existence there just uh, making rings and necklaces day in and day out and fixing people wa people's watches and watching the world go by out his window Anyhow, the guy was uh, standing outside of his door, and he had a helmet on, a hard hat. Uh, most, not, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people keep hard hats at home. It's just part of their, uh, their survival gear. And he alerted me that there had just been an earthquake, and he gave a gesture to move back, step away from the, uh, the building, as though stuff could fall down. So we, we moved away. I asked him when it had happened and what the intensity was. The intensity still hadn't been reported, but he, uh, he said it had just happened a few minutes ago, so I must have noticed that before when, when I felt a little stumble. And uh, we rushed back home. Or we just walked at a normal pace in heavy rain. Got home, and my two uh, eldest daughters were kind of freaking out. Not freaking out, but they had uh, all of the information, they've been watching TV, and my eldest daughter told me where it was, what the intensity was, there's a tsunami warning. So I started watching the TV, and I had 
a combination of the anxiety from not having my work done for class, which was going to be today, and uh, also finally for the first time kind of starting to get very antsy and uh, kind of freaked out over this whole earthquake deal. I mean, like, enough is enough already. It was a completely wobbly day all day, and then once there was that earthquake in the afternoon, it became even more wobbly. It seemed like every 10 minutes I felt the, the building shaking. Nobody else did. My wife said, no, there's nothing. But I just was very much uh, on guard and uh, worried. Anyhow, taking a look at the video, here we are uh, going over a nice river. I think Shinkoiwa is the next station along the way. And uh, here you get some nice cherry blossoms in this park. Beautiful sunny day. There's no evidence of that big rain last night. And anyhow, once the uh, once I got to uh, the station where I get off the train here, took the bus over to the campus, and we came to a bus stop. And I noticed the bus started before the bus started wobbling. Uh, my my cell phone started buzzing that there had been, again, an early warning of an earthquake, and seconds later the bus started wobbling at the stop, and the bus driver said, well, it's, uh, it's a big earthquake, everybody be careful as you get off. Just ridiculous. And uh, then I did my classes, the classes went really well, it was a, a good first day of teaching. Although I, I did bring up the topic of the earthquake, as we'll see on the video in a bit with the final homework assignment. Uh, but just, you know, I'm pretty comfortable now as a, an ESL teacher and uh, have a couple of good classes, good groups of students. So it was totally fine. It was actually fun, the teaching part. And then as the second class ended, I, I've, done, I've done something new this semester where I have students write up a a nameplate on a piece of paper so they write their name in English and in Japanese and I'm doing this in an effort to learn students names uh, better so it means I have to come early to hand them out to the students and hopefully have a little bit of chit chat and then at the end of the class I collect them and this was after the second class just the students were standing in line to give me their uh, their, their nameplates uh, everybody's cell phone went off simultaneously there was another earthquake warning uh, we didn't feel it, but there's just that thing, you're, you're, it's always there, it can, it can happen at any time, and you don't know when the uh, early warning comes how intense the thing's going to be. So, that was that. Then I got myself home, picked up a little bit of food on the way home, and was uh, sitting down at the table. I checked the Twitter, because all of the people here in Japan are tweeting when these little events happen, but there was a, a large gap of time, so I didn't get to see the morning earthquake on there. I was curious about how intense it was, the one I felt on the bus. But the, um, the darn cell phone went off again. <laughs> I'm sitting down to eat lunch, and this time the apartment started shaking, and it went on for about 40 seconds or so. And we've got this construction work going on outside where the, uh, the guys are putting up scaffolding outside of our apartment building. Uh, because apparently the building owner wants to have the whole structure checked for integrity since the, uh, the big earthquake last month. So I looked out the window and the iron bars from this uh, thing are all wobbling completely, swaying back and forth as were the power lines. So all I can say is enough, enough already. This stuff sucks. It really does, it really does. Okay, I'm continuing to notice that there is somebody in the Justin TV. It would be cool to get a little bit of indication that you're there. Maybe identify yourself in the chat room if you wish. You don't need to, but it would be nice. Or you could uh, phone in on Skype, Scott Low Radio. Let's see if I can put your video up in the feed as well through the cam twist. I'm going to turn off the mic for just a second. I'll be back in a few to uh, see what's happening. Uh, stand by for that.
that was the wrong button there. Got the volume down now. So here's my station, Ichikawa in Shiba. And I wanted to capture the sense of packed trains on the train on the other platform coming inbound. But I was a little uh, self-conscious about pointing a camera at people. So I just tried to uh, affect the and the tourist, just shooting at signs and trying to take the whole scene in without being too obvious. And there you can see it in that door over there. That train is just totally packed. And they're uh, just waiting a couple of minutes before taking off. Very good for this. Yeah, the line's coming inbound. It's called the Sobu line. And if there's a local line and a rapid, uh, consistently fully packed. And then here finally, this is the uh, homework assignment I wanted people to do. Uh, I gave them three questions. Right, let me back that up. Is that going to work? Yeah, get rid of this other picture here. So I asked them, uh, how do the events from March 11th affect your life in the short term? and how do they affect your life in the long term. And uh, curious to see what the students think. Uh, short term and long term might even be fairly new concepts. But uh, it's affecting everybody one way or another. And the final question through the way was, what can the world learn by the way the Japanese people have responded to the events? And that's kind of the, uh, the other recurring theme that people around the world just uh, are very impressed with the way Japan has handled these calamities back the beginning. Okay, well I think that's going to do it for me for now. I'll let some of these pictures play in a little loop for a while. And if we get more people here in the Justin TV chat room, I might come in and do the whole thing again. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, thanks for hanging out. This is uh, Scott Lowe turning off the mic and turning the music back up for a few minutes. Thanks for tagging along.